Hello and welcome to our lesson on non-linear direct proportion. So in this lesson we're going to consider two measurements. For instance an x measurement and a y. And because they're in direct proportion this means that as one measurement, for instance x, increases, the other measurement, y, would also increase. Similarly, if x was to decrease, y would also decrease. And we can look at this using sketched graphs. So if we had a direct linear proportion, x and y would follow a straight line, for instance, like this. Now the gradient of a line could change, but it would be a straight line. But if we had a non-linear direct proportion, they would still increase together, but this would now be along a curve. So in this lesson, we're going to look at what happens for non-linear direct proportion and how we model this algebraically. Okay, so let's have a look at question A. So in question A, we're told that y is directly proportional to the square of x. Now we write this as y is directly proportional, this symbol means proportional, to the square of x. So we have x and we're squaring this. So y is directly proportional to x squared. Now this defines the relationship, but it doesn't show you how near in proportion. To show how near in proportion, we need a value called k. And k is the constant of proportionality. So what this tells us is that y is changing with the square of x, but the k value tells us exactly how they change. So we need to begin by working out the value of k. And we can do this because we've been given a matching pair of y and x. So we can substitute these two into our equation. So we can say that y, which is 80, is equal to k times x squared, and x is 4. So 4 squared. We can work out 4 squared as 16. So 80 is equal to 16 multiplied by k. Now if we divide both sides by 16, these will cancel and we're left with k is equal to 5. So now we can substitute this value of k back into this equation here. So we have y is equal to 5 lots of x squared. So what this tells us is that as x squared increases, y becomes five times bigger. So this defines the equation connecting y and x. Okay, so let's move on to question B. So in question B, we've been told that y is proportional to the square of x again. So we can write this out as y is proportional to x squared. We're going to find out how near in proportion by rewriting this as an equation involving the constant of proportionality, k. And we can substitute in when y is 147 and x is 7. So 147 in place of the y, and this is equal to k multiplied by the x, which is 7 squared. Well, 7 squared is 49, so 147 is equal to 49 k and now to work out what k is we can divide both sides by 49 and these two will cancel so we're left with k is equal to 3 and now we'll substitute this value of k the constant of proportionality back into our model up here so y is equal to 3x squared so now we can use this model to work out the value of y when x equals 4. So now we can say that y is equal to 3, which is our k value, times x, which we're given as 4, squared. Well, 4 squared is 16, and 16 times 3 gives us 48. So we know that when x is equal to 4, y is equal to 48. Okay, do you want to try and work out question B by firstly finding the formula connecting the two, P and Q, and then using that formula to work out P when Q is 36, and then to work out Q when P is 480? You can pause the video and resume it when you're ready. 
Okay, so welcome back if you had a go. So for question C, we know that P is directly proportional to the square root of Q. So we'll write this as P is directly proportional to the square root of Q. So now we'll rewrite this as an equation. So P is equal to K root Q. And we're told that P is 128 and Q is 16. And this is the square root of 16. Well, the square root of 16 is 4, so we know that k will be 128 divided by 4, which gives us 32. So we can substitute this 32 into our model. So p is equal to 32 root q. So for part 1, work out p when q is equal to 36. So we can use our model that p is equal to 32 multiplied by the square root of q, which is 36. Well, the square root of 36 is 6, so p is equal to 32 times 6, which gives us 192. And for part 2, this time we've been given p is 480. And this is equal to 32 root q. So to work out what q is, we'll divide both sides by 32. These will cancel. And 480 divided by 32 is 15. And this is root q. So now we'll take the square of both sides. These will cancel. So q is equal to 200. And 25. Okay, let's move on to one final question. So here we have an exam style question where we're told the mass of a cube of lead m is directly proportional to the cube of its side length s. And a cube with a side length of 2 centimeters has a mass of 162 grams. So we've been asked to work out a formula for the mass of a cube of lead in terms of its side length. And then for part B, we've been told that a lead ingot has a mass of 12.4 kilograms. What size of cube would this ingot make? So do you want to try questions A and B yourself? You can pause the video and resume it when you're ready. Okay, so welcome back if you had a go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to state the equation. So we've been told that M is directly proportional so the symbol here, to the side length cubed, so s cubed. Now we can model this proportion as an equation involving k, so m is equal to k s cubed. And we can work out k by substituting in s equals 2, and m is 160, 2. So 162 is equal to k multiplied by 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8, so 162 is equal to 8k. Now we'll divide both sides by 8, and these will cancel. So now we have k is equal to 20.25. So we can substitute this value of k back into our model. So m is equal to 20.25 s cubed. So this is our formula for part A. For part B, we've been told that the ingot has a mass of 12.4 kilograms, but this is given in grams. So I'm going to convert this kilograms into grams by multiplying it by a thousand. And this will be 12,400 grams. So 12,400 is equal to 20.25 s cubed. We'll divide both sides by 20.25. These will cancel. So s cubed will be 612.35. We'll take the cube root of both sides. These will cancel. So the side of length of a cube 
is approximately 8.5 centimeters. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I hope you found that useful. Thanks again and take care.